I'm going to do a casting demonstration today with Petrobon, which I picked up from PMC Supplies, uh, ordered on the 22nd, um, and I picked it up from eBay, uh, and it showed up today, a day early. It was supposed to be here the 28th. Anyway, it came in a uh, USPS a bubble wrap uh, bag. Um, it was wrapped really well. I gave good reviews, and I've got to play with it a little bit. I uh, went to the website and checked out that they say that these are supposed, this should produce really nice results. So, anyways, I'm going to go ahead and uh, get started here a little bit. Um, uh, with my same flywheel, here it is. Uh, and the instructions recommend um, for the, uh, what you put on top of this, you actually are supposed to sift. I got my little sifter here. Okay, get my mold centered here. So we'll do a little sifting. And they said that you don't need any powders, but we'll just see here. I have no filmographer today, so I'm doing this all on my own. But they said you only need to sift over your original pattern. Um, and then when you press that in, you can fill the rest of the mold with unsifted. Look at me, I'm following the instructions. Can you believe that? All right, get enough in there. see what that does for us. Probably overdoing this, but uh, I'm looking for excellent results. You read the things, they say that uh, this, uh, you know, obviously this is the sales pitch, but they said you can uh, produce near die cast uh, quality. Uh, but there is a disclaimer, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, results may vary. <laughs> okay, so. Definitely feels different than the green sand. All right, but I'm going to go with that with a start. As a start. Definitely has a different feel to it. This was, uh, I think, about $27 delivered for 10 pounds. Um, the way I see it, if it actually does the job, that'll be awesome. Because uh, uh, if you're going to cast, you're trying to get replicas. You want to be as good as possible. But this is for jewelry making, which is pretty fine detail, I would imagine. Um, I mean, I, it is. See if there's any holes or... Holy cow. I just picked that thing up and I didn't flip it and the it, it mold just fell right out. And it looks really fine. Let me get a pointer. I do see a couple issues here. Let me see if you guys can see all this. Oh, oh I forgot to start recording. Let's see here. I got parting powder. I'm so excited. I'm so like nervous. It's like. How's this going to turn out? How's it going to turn out? It's 
definitely got a different texture than the, uh, you know, the uh, sand, the silica sand. I just have a feeling this is going to be one of those things, you know, once you go to the Petro Pond, you're not going to go back. I just have that feeling here. Okay. Okay. I'll knock these pins through and I'll be right back. Okay, knock these pins out. Wow. Well, I can see like the different heights and stuff. Try to get it up here and see. Um, <clears throat> you can see right around here where it's kind of, I can't really see 3D here. There you go. Now you can see it right there where the ridges came, where they kind of sank on the other side. I'm going to sit here for a minute and think whether I'm going to go with this or redo it again. I'll be back in just a moment. Well, I figure it may be worthwhile to go ahead and pull the, the flywheel out before I make a decision. And that sucker just came right out of there. <laughs> I'm so excited right now with the level of detail on here. I'm just like trying to, you know, do I just go with this or do I do it again? Let's give you a little close up here so you can take a look. See what I see. See, I see a little. Let me get this sucker even closer. You can see that it is way better than the, uh, way better than this silica. I know if I go with this, I'm going to get a way better casting. The question is, do I try to shoot for better or do I go with this? I think, sorry, I don't know if you can see over here. Let me turn a sucker around here. If you can see there, there's... I don't think I packed it tight enough along that edge, or I did something wrong. And I think I can do better than that. So I think I'm going to go ahead and do this again, uh, just so I can get the absolute best. All right, I'll be back. So I think my issue is, is that this, this board, I'm not going to show you, but this is a wire rack table, just like that one there. And I've got a piece of half inch, it used to be the top of a, a dresser you know just cheap and it's got some flex to it and uh, I think what I may be causing some problems is, is that flex and uh, so I just got this board here uh, to get no matter what the table won't flex now I got that oak it's probably three-quarter inch oak um, and then also another thing I noticed on the last one is I I want to get this I don't know if you can see here closer to one side uh, because I had it kind of centered before. Um, so I'll go ahead and try doing it this way. All right, sifting sand, sifting sand. Yeah. I'm going to edit this and I'm going to take all the sand sifting out. Uh, uh, but I think I need to pack it tighter around the peripheral of the uh, flywheel.
So uh, I've got that um, draft angle so tight that if I drop that board, the brass will just fall out. So in this case, I'll go ahead and flip it. Uh, and this one's looking a little bit better than the last one I took out. Okay. Oh my gosh. I may have made a mistake, guys. <laughs> oh. <laughs> did y'all did y'all see that when I started doing this? Uh, why did anybody stop me? Oh, man. <laughs> okay. Well, what I did, guys, was uh, I <laughs> created a mold of one of my casts, and I didn't use the, uh, uh, I didn't use the pattern. Oh, my gosh. I'm just so excited. Okay. All right. Let's do this again. So a little side note I'll give you guys, uh, I, I don't know if I've mentioned this or not, but uh, my buddy has got a CNC machine and he has offered, uh, he's offered to uh, cut my flywheel in CNC, uh, but I need to draw the flywheel in SketchUp, and, uh, which I think there's a free or 30 day trial that you can use. Um, and SketchUp, but uh, you know, I you know, if you worked on SketchUp for a living, I'm sure it'd be pretty easy. But um, all the complex radius, so I, I work with an architect in town, uh, uh, and Welsh and Associates, and uh, uh, I was trying to find somebody there that can do the SketchUp for me. And uh, as of yet, I don't have anybody, not everybody knows how to use it. Um, so, it'd be a lot easier to do it, you know, CNC, um, and then just go ahead and uh, cast from that. So anyway, that's one thing that may come up on the horizon is the uh, a flywheel, but I'm really excited about maybe making a 5 inch flywheel. Um, I have an application for it. Uh, that if we get around to it, I will show you that, or when we get around to it. Uh, even though I was casting the, uh, or molding the wrong part, uh, it did come out pretty beautiful, and I kind of just glossed over that really fast, I think. One thing about watching him, I always see him working on his knees. He's an older guy. Always working on his knees. I don't know what kind of concerns me. I want to have my knees as long as possible. I don't know if working on your knees makes them last longer or shorter. But my guess would make think that they make them last less. I was just sitting here thinking of me when I actually get a two-sided pattern, that's gonna be really cool too. On my cope and my drag I got this line here so I remember which side goes which which side. Oh 
Oh my gosh. Be careful what you're doing there. I almost dropped my brass out. Okay, um, the uh, there, the sprue here. Okay. Uh, there is a, a gentleman here. Um, I'm going to get his name. He'll be back. David Kirtley. Uh, I guess he took some classes. I mean, he probably did more than this. But uh, what he's shared with me, David Kirtley, thank you very much for everything you have shared. But he said he had went through a jewelry making class. Oh, great pieces of advice. Making a longer sprue. I did comment on it on the website, but I want to go ahead and comment on the video because sometimes people don't always get down to the comments below. But David, thank you very much. Uh, you know, his suggestion is go ahead and make a longer sprue, you know, because it's a mix for a good ingot on your next pour. You know, uh, yeah, I know this is all 101 stuff, but that's me. I'm in 101 class for sure. I think after I do this, I'm going to go watch my Ford, Vo my Ford Boy videos a bunch of times and pay way more closer attention to this new technique. It's funny, you can watch a video, some things you simply just don't pay attention to. But now that actually I got the same material uh, that he is using, um, that, uh, you know, all the little fine details about the uh, Um, where to push and how to do this and when to use a stick and all those kind of things probably become way more valuable. Looks damn perfect. Damn good. Okay. Just give you a close up of that real quick. And give you another close up of this. Okay. Again, my camera operated a little ill today. So, uh, doing this all by my lonesome. Okay, good. So you've seen the uh, mold making and the pattern and everything I've done. And uh, we're going to go ahead and pause the video here, clean up, start melting some brass. Okay, finally got back to the uh, uh, the lathe straightening video. I mean the uh, bandsaw straightening video. Sorry, mistake. Nope, this is not a mistake. Okay. We still gotta get decapitate this guy here. Make uh, pieces enough for a flywheel. Uh, he had a run in uh, a couple days ago, but he survived. Or she, I don't know. I tried to look, couldn't tell. But anyway, uh, we must make flywheels, right? Here we go. Battle scar. I 
hearts and hollow. You guys never have that problem, do you? Ever? I'm sure you don't. You have one of these saws, it never happens. I read online to study about how to fix this, and they say you got to get your guide straight and your tensions right. And they said get it really, get it really tight on the belt. I think the one recommendation I need to follow that I haven't followed is to get a real blade for this sucker. I think this needs to be done with a five pound sledge because it's hollow. Uh, I think I'm not going to record the ultraviolence. But I will t let you take a look at the uh, temperature gauge. Look, we're getting close to melt. Okay, loading the crucible here. It says load it one third full, but in my mind that means half to almost full because more air in there than anything all right a little bit of sliced goose a little uh piano pedal there we go a little gooseneck a little other pieces Some head. All right, we'll start with that, and then uh, when that melts down, we'll add some more. Well, we are at uh, sixteen eighty-seven on the. Uh, on the smelter, okay, 1692. So I would say just a couple minutes here and we'll be ready to load the crucible in. Okay guys, we are up to temperature and I've turned the overhead lights on just so maybe you can get a better look here. Um, see here if I cover the light. Uh, there. See it's glowing orange there. Uh, just turn the big light on. Okay. I think I'm going to get this crucible started the right way the first time. So I won't rotate it. You guys have watched my other videos. I'm always rotating the crucible before I pour. So anyway, I put that in there and the temperature's dropping right now. It, it was at 1850 and now it's 1630. It's dropping, it's dropping. Let's go ahead and close this and I'll let you watch the, watch the temp drop. And, and uh, you can kind of watch the recovery here. Let's see how low it gets before it starts to come up. You know, roughly, it's probably, I don't know, maybe a little less than half with all the air in there. Um, and then, obviously, when it comes up to temp the first time, it comes up pretty quick. Um, and then with the brass, it doesn't come up as quite as fast. Um, yeah, I've noticed some people put a watch next to this, and then they, uh, you know, let you get a sense of the speed or how long it takes. Uh, Okay, there it just went up one degree. Okay, 1384 is where it dropped. Okay, it's hovering back and forth and back and forth. Uh, anyway, so <clears throat> let me make a note of the time. Uh, 6.45 p.m. right now. And then uh, when it gets up to melting temperature, I'll try to recall. I'll, I mean, I'll, I'll give you the time at that time so you can see. What the recovery time is and then I'll try to give you the time again uh, when I start adding brass because it gets up to temperature and then it takes 
mm, a small amount of time to get to like a, a liquid after it reaches the correct temperature. So I'll try to give you those times. Okay, we're at 1556 and it is 1850 the setting and it will hover around 10, 12 degrees above or below that number. Um, so let's go ahead and see uh, what it looks like inside of the crucible here. 45, 55, 11 minutes. Let's go ahead and take a look and see how it looks. Okay. We can see it glowing orange down there in the bottom. And uh, the top's still relatively uh, cold. And uh, so I will go ahead and shut this up, check it in about 10 minutes. And uh, I will give you another update and let you know the time. Okay, the time is 7.03 now. And let's take a look and see what we can see. Uh, all the metal has uh, dropped down now. There's, you can still see some of it is hard in there. Um, but you can see that it is mostly melted. So, anyway, so you get a time there. A little bit less than half full, I would say, on the, uh, on the crucible here. So we are going to let this sit here for probably another four or five minutes. And then add some more um, brass. Well, guys, I missed that. I just uh, put a piece of brass in there, and it had an air pocket or something, you know. Seems like I'm uh, always missing a recording of stuff that would be valuable for you guys to watch. Uh, but uh, I had uh, brass come up on me. It spit out, and let me show you what happened here. You can see there's a piece there. And there's a piece right there behind that screen. And I had two pieces pop out here um, and burnt my tabletop there. So uh, that would have been a pretty nasty burn there. So uh, make sure to use uh, all the safety uh, features you've got, equipment you've got, uh, face shield, gloves, um, uh, long sleeves, um, shirts, uh, everything. So definitely. Be safe. Okay, we'll come back uh, and uh, take another look here in just a few minutes. Okay, the time is 7.10. Let's go ahead and take another look here. And uh, you can see um, maybe still less than half. Got something sitting here on the top. I want to check that out see what that could be some dross or just get something hard in there okay that was just something left over from uh something left over from uh you're dropping that big chunk in there. We go with a little bit more uh, brass in there. That'll be good enough for this pour. So I would take another three or four minutes and that will be melted down and we'll do our pour. Okay guys, we are ready to cast and since I do not have a camera operator, I'm just going to go over to the petrol bond here, um, bring it down there, show you where the casting is going, and then uh, we're going to do a pour here. Uh, so I've kind of got the camera here, and uh, so I'll kind of be in and out here. Well, let's go ahead and do the flux here. I'll show you the flux. Okay. I already took the off. It was a little bit, but not very much. All right. Move the camera here. Okay. Okay. 
and that will be the scene. Well, as I said before, I've already got my uh, crucible turned in the correct direction. So here we go. I can definitely smell the difference there. The, the oil there, I can smell that. Just cleaning my crucible out. It's actually pretty clean though. So the first time I had a lot of uh, dross, uh, but uh, all the subsequent pours, not very much at all. I got a little smoke coming out of the vent holes and uh, got a little fire burning on top of the um, fire burning on top of the brass thing. And if you watch it, I think you can see it sinking. I think I can. So uh, we're going to let this sit here. Um, and then I, ha I have a question for you. I ask you guys to do a favor, I'm trying to grow my channel. I'm up to 88 subscribers, which uh, I'm really happy about that. Um, but I see these people with thousands and hundreds of thousands. You know, I know with the kind of my shop videos, I'm not going to go huge, but I would like to go a little bit bigger. So if y'all, uh, if you appreciate this video at all, if you appreciate my videos, if you could uh, uh, Plug me on the social media or a blog relating to uh, metalworking, metal casting, lathing, machining. Um, it would probably be really helpful to get my channel over 88 subscribers. Again, I'm just new to all this, so I'm just going to appeal to you. If you guys would please take the time to do that, I would appreciate it. Um, and again, with a sign off, I'll always say that uh, you know if you like this video, subscribe if you're a new viewer. So. Uh, we're going to let this cool down for 5-10 minutes or so and then uh, we'll break it open and uh, see what we got. Okay, it's been about 5 minutes. So let's go ahead and uh, unveil. Terrifying when I'm doing something new. I just feel like I'm going to uh, have a short pour or something. I feel a little concerned about all that. Uh, one of the things is maybe I should have made my vents bigger. I don't know. I'm always trying to second guess what I could have possibly done wrong. Alrighty. Okay. Well, from here. I can see I've got a super fine finish. Way better, way, way better. Again, I got pitting right here, I can tell. Um, I'll go grab number five wheel number four. Well, this is just number two to compare on, but this one's been polished, so it's not really a good comparison. But you can see this is where the uh, that's where we were casting. That's where all the um, pitting came in. Uh, overall, wow, this is definitely a huge improvement. I may need a longer gate uh, to uh, get rid of all of that pitting. But uh, over here, I mean, uh, the definition is absolutely astounding. All right, let's go ahead and pull this out and make sure we got all of our spokes and everything. The vents didn't come up very high. Tried grabbing that with my gloves, but it's so hot I really need to glove it, grab it with these here. So maybe 
be a better ideal too. and get my little Harbor Freight purchase here. Six little brushes, brass, nylon, and steel for, uh, I think it was two bucks. Let me get this cleaned up a little bit and then we'll take a close look at it. So, how good was this transfer? Well, let me bring up the, uh, let me bring up the pattern, set them side by side. This thing's still incredibly hot. But uh, let me point out a few things for you here. Oh, you suckers, you quit spinning. Okay, here we go. Okay, so. You don't have an app timer operator, get one. Okay. So here's what I want to tell you what I noticed. We're all right. In here there's some machining marks from when I was uh, lathing this. And those machining marks have carried over. You can see them on that right hand spoke there. You can see them on the top. That's absolutely amazing. Really amazing. Wow, Petro Bond, I, I'm going to be a, definitely a salesman for you. I think a longer gate will help. If I increase the size of the, the gate here, probably get less pitting on the inset. Uh, I think my forms have reached their max, um, their maximum. But this is enormous times better. I still got the, the sunken divot here. I did actually push it in a little bit with my finger, but it's just a big chunk of brass, and when it cools down, it's just sinking in. So, yeah, I got I to gotta do something about that. The vents didn't come up very high. Overall, really impressive. I'm going to uh, let this cool down a little bit, wire wheel it up a little bit, and uh, show you guys a little bit more. I just wanted to give you all a comparison. No, sorry, let me start over. I want to give you all a comparison. This was the uh, Silica Sand and uh, the silica sand and bentonite clay. Now, this is really poor. Not a very good cast at all. Um, maybe it was a little wet, but not, you know, very, very wet. But uh, the finish there, and I just took the copper pipe and pushed it down in there um, to have an ingot. But as you can see, yeah, that's not very good at all. So anyway, just as a comparison there. Just wanted to give you another another picture of the sprue. Uh, kind of interesting, look, it's uh, less pitted here and way more pitted down here. Way more pitted in that, yeah, that pitting carries over to the front side and even the back side to a higher degree. So I think I need a longer gate here. Um, but uh, I've definitely got this, I've got it, like I said, to, to hand-holding temperature. Uh, so I think it's time to go ahead and cut the sprue off and uh, wire wheel it a little bit. Actually, no, I'm not going to wire wheel it because uh, I want to cut the sprue off and actually get a good look at this sucker, what the finish looks like. Starting over, here's the castings here. That was number one, two, three. That one, if you guys recall, was highly polished. And the next one I'm gonna show you is number four. It was 100% totally unauthorized by me. 
Um, this is one that uh, my son Jack uh, did without me knowing. <laughs> All right. And then here is the Petrobond casting uh, right next to the pattern. And uh, there is some really amazing things here. Let me show you here as far as the casting is concerned. If you look here and here. Oop. Well, back you can see the machining marks. There's a machining mark, machining mark. Come over here, you can just barely see that. You can see the machine marks here. We have some pitting here. M mainly the pitting comes where the gate was. Right there, that's where the gate was. I'd cut that off, obviously. And uh, look, it's the other side. We'll take a really close look at the other side here see what we see here oh, oh wait one more quick thing on the other side as you see right there in the center there's a, a point but if you look at the pattern you see that point as well so that carried over taking a look at the back side these were this was a vent here here's a vent it sunk a little bit here not sure why you know obviously I showed you that it sunk here and then again here this is where the gate was and we got a lot of pitting here so again I think I need to make my gate considerably longer anyway I'm going to conclude this video uh, thank you all very much for watching um, you have a nice evening if you enjoy my videos please subscribe and as I mentioned if you could post this uh, if you like these videos and you want to post them on social media I would really appreciate it okay guys have a good evening thanks